Right, it's uh, it's Friday, it's just after 12. I'm here with Wanderers manager Mark White. How are you doing, Mark? Fine, mate. Cheers. Good stuff. Good. Right. Um, okay, so let's just um, recap on the, the football that's been played um, over the last week. Obviously, last Saturday we were at home. Yeah. Uh, we welcomed Hemel Hempstead, got a 2 1 victory there. And then on Tuesday, we, re- we hit the road and went down to Eastbourne Borough. Uh, where we uh, we lost the game three two. Can I just get your thoughts on on the football from the last week or so? Yeah, you know, I think relatively happy with it to be honest. Um, obviously disappointed to throw away a two goal lead and it was such a blistering performance uh, in the first half Tuesday. But you know, there's good sides in this league, Chris, and we are, um, you know, we're um, we, we're sort of we're missing big players for for this club, and that's nothing against the other boys because. Let's face it, you know, we're, we're doing really well. Um, but, you know, th- th- there's, there's always a certain um, still uh, to your side when you've got the experience in there. And you know, I, th- I thought we missed that on Tuesday. There's, you can have the best team in the world, but there's certain scenarios like being two up away from home, you know, on a midweek game uh, when you need players that know how to manage that situation and thought we played a bit naively. Also, I just think we gassed a little bit as well. We played with 10 men Saturday, got an amazing win in the most bizarre circumstances ever with um, the striker going in goal, 88 minutes or more than 90 minutes in total playing with 10 men and won the game. So when you when you sort of put that in the, in the mix, you know, getting three points out of two games, you could argue is all right. Um, I thought it would take a lot out of us. I think it did credit Eastbourne for getting the win and they're a great side, that's why they're in the playoffs and, and having a good season. But, you know, we're, um, we'll be putting the last week behind us very much now. This is the running now, you know, so now we do care what the rivals do. You know, now we do think about other results on a match day. It is that time of, se- time of the season when, when everything matters, mate. And, um, you know, we'll just take the next game as it comes along, you know, so that, that's what we'll do. Okay, and uh, obviously you had a session with the lads last night down at Meadowbank. How, how well, it wasn't that big. Yeah. No, no I, was, I was going to ask. I, I, I know that you did put something out there asking. Well, me yeah. Boots. It's not, not looking good? No, mate, it's not really. We're, we're going to have to play boys that are, that are not well at all. <laughs> no choice, but um, one or two of them. But we went into like Saturday and Tuesday with, you know, Pryor, Briggs, Fuller. Fogden, Moore, McShane, right? Then we wake up. I mean, this is, you know, this is just how it is, right? This is just that. Could other teams try to rise out of the missing one one player? We're talking, this is the volume of players we, we've been carrying that are essentially, you know, first choice players. Um, then we wake up Wednesday, uh, Thursday morning with McManus, Mewitt, Ed Harris, Wheeler. So um, it's it's an uphill challenge, mate. But we've got a great bunch of lads. You know, I don't apologise for stipulating these other boys that you know are regular starters because you know the fact of the matter is they don't all start at the same time. But even three of those is a is, is a big deal. So tomorrow's going to be tough. But we'll have the fans behind us. It is what it is, mate. We'll hope the wondrous God to route. It's going to be a difficult, a difficult game. Um, but we've, we've just got to spare a thought for, for, for where this club is at. We're top of the division and we've been there for a few months now and we've had a torrid season. I've never known a season like it, mate. And this, uh, the, the situation for the weekend epitomises it, you know. Um, but to be in, you know, even competition with all these other big, fantastic clubs uh, with nine games to go is quite remarkable. So I'm really proud of that uh, for, the, for the players, for the fans, for the management team. What will be will be. The target was the home playoffs. We don't want the home playoffs. We want to win the league, obviously. But as a fullback after the season we've had, we'll be happy. But who knows what's going to happen, mate? Who knows what's going to happen? There's a lot of football to be played, 27 points. So, you know, we're just going to take one at a time. Gary's team will be competitive, uh, but we will as well. 
Yeah, yeah, that sort of tees me up nicely because obviously, as you say, nine only nine games to go. Uh, starting with Hampton and Richmond Borough tomorrow at Meadowbank. Yeah, um, they've had a troubled season. I picked up a few results of late. You know, we say it every week, but any every single team in this league has to be respected. Um, and um, Hampton are like that. Gary's a great manager, great guy. Um, and they'll be all out tomorrow. I think they've won their last few. You know, but we've won quite a few games as well, haven't we? So, um, you know, we're, we're looking to, you know, do things a bit differently maybe. And, um, you know, the, the focus is just on and winning at all costs. That's, that's the bottom line for these matches, mate. I think we'll have more than the ticket sales are really good. There's still some available. We're going to have a load more people in there tomorrow cheering the boys on. We're going to need it. And, um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how we get on, mate. At five o'clock tomorrow. Let's, let's have a win on the board. Absolutely. Okay, Mark, well, on that note, I'll, uh, I'll wish you luck for the weekend and uh, we'll catch up again next Friday. Thanks, mate. Cheers.